Nightwing, aka Dick Grayson, the original Robin, has no superhuman abilities, and instead he relies on his peak human performance, elite level fighting and acrobatic skills, and his lightning fast speed and reflexes to best his opponents. But this level of fitness, it doesn't come easy, and if Nightwing existed in real life, he would need a strength and conditioning plan specifically designed to making his body fast, strong, lean, and resilient. But luckily, creating such a program is simple when you use the performance method. This is a highly effective form of training program design that when used properly is amazing for creating well-rounded athletes. The first step of using the performance method is to identify what aspects of human performance the athlete in question needs to develop. So let's take a look at how Nightwing fights so we can create the perfect program for him and for anyone that wants to look and perform just like him. Like most non-superpowered comic book heroes, Nightwing as a master of many forms of martial arts, like judo, boxing, jujitsu, and of course you can't forget about his masterful use of his Escrama sticks. But what really sets Nightwing's fighting style apart from someone like Batman is his speed and his elite level acrobatic skills. Before Dick Grayson became the first Robin, he was actually a member of the Flying Graysons, which is the name of his family's circus acrobatic act. Thanks to his time performing as part of the Flying Graysons, and then his future agility training that he got while working with Batman, Nightwing is the fastest, most skilled acrobat in the DC Universe. Nightwing uses these skills along with his speed and martial arts mastery to outmaneuver his opponents in a fight, dodging all their attacks until he sees an opening to land his own. But all that dodging and jumping around to find an opening would be for nothing if Nightwing didn't have some serious power behind his own hits. So of course Nightwing would have to work on his maximum strength and power output to make sure he could pack a punch. Now this is where creating a training program for Nightwing becomes a little bit of a balancing act. Nightwing may be at the peak of human performance, but at the end of the day, he's still a normal human, meaning if someone with superhuman strength lands a hit on him, he's in big trouble. So while he definitely needs to work on his strength and power, he needs to do so without putting on too much muscle mass, as every extra pound on his frame will slow him down, thus making him lose what makes him such a formidable fighter, his speed and agility. But luckily there's a way of building strength and power without putting on a ton of extra muscle mass, which we'll go over when we talk about the final program later in the video. And of course, like I said, Nightwing is just a normal human with normal joints and tendons. Tendons are the tissues that connect muscle to bone, and because of their limited amount of blood supply, they take much longer to recover from the stressors of training and crime fighting than muscles. So Nightwing's training program would have to be designed specifically in a way that doesn't put too much stress on his tendons, while also increasing their strength and resiliency over time. Alright, so here are the main areas of human performance that Nightwing's program will focus on improving using the performance method. I've gone ahead and broken them down into three categories. First, for his martial arts, he will need strength and power for powerful strikes, cardiovascular endurance to keep him in the fight for long periods of time, and flexibility and mobility training so that he can pull off all those fancy moves that we see in the comics without getting injured. For his acrobatics, he will need explosive power so he can jump and flip as high as possible, and muscular endurance to be able to climb and jump from roof to roof without burning out. For his general performance, He'll need the brute strength to carry allies and other heavy objects, a high level of both anaerobic and aerobic cardiovascular fitness so he doesn't have a goddamn heart attack from all this insane activity, and finally, tendon and joint resiliency so he doesn't blow out his knee or his shoulder while landing a flip or throwing a punch. Now peak performance isn't the only thing that makes Dick Grayson Nightwing. He wouldn't be the badass hero he is without his amazing super suit, and if you want to perform like a badass, you're going to need your own super suit as well, and that's where my partners over at Super X come in. They make the world's most badass superhero themed workout apparel. You can think of them like a mix between Marvel and Lululemon. They've got designs based off all your favorite heroes, like Captain America, Batman, Nightwing, and Moon Knight. All their super suits are made with high quality super stretch fabric, making them perfect for any workout. And with thousands of five star reviews from all over the world, you know it's good stuff. To get your very own super suit, follow the link down in my description and use code DEMERS at checkout for 20% off your first order. Now back to the video. So now that we know exactly what Nightwing needs to focus on with his training, we can put together his program using the performance method. The performance method uses something called training periodization to get athletes to the peak of human performance, all while making them incredibly resilient to injury. Sounds perfect for Nightwing. So what is training periodization and how do we use it? Training periodization is simply when we break down our long-term training into different phases. And each of these phases will have us working on a different aspect of human performance. In one phase, we'll be working on our work capacity, then in the next, our strength, and then our explosive power, etc. The reason it's beneficial to periodize your training like this is because the human body responds and adapts very specifically to the type of training it's undergoing. So 
you'll improve a lot more over the course of a year by breaking down your training into different phases and working on each aspect of human performance separately rather than just trying to do everything all at once. Okay, so based off the breakdown of Nightwing's fighting style we did earlier, here are the three phases of training Nightwing would need to cycle through to get and maintain peak crime fighting performance. And make sure to stick around to the end where I'll be giving you a full three phase training program that you can follow yourself to become an athlete like Nightwing. Phase A, general preparation. I want you to think about Nightwing's training like a pyramid and this phase is its base. We can only build high levels of performance if we have a large base. So in this first phase, we'll be focusing on building muscle, increasing the strength and resiliency of tendons and joints, creating great aerobic fitness, while also making sure Nightwing is flexible and mobile. We're going to be creating these adaptations by selecting a variety of functional movements and performing them at high volumes with a full range of motion, while keeping the weight slash intensity relatively low. We'll increase the volume, aka the amount of work being performed, over the weeks of this phase, but we'll keep the intensity, aka the amount of weight we'll be using, relatively static. This will come together to create a large amount of work capacity and resiliency for Nightwing that he can take advantage of in the next two phases of training. Phase B, Maximum Strength. In this phase, we'll be focusing on giving Nightwing some brute strength, making sure he's strong enough to carry people, drag heavy objects, throw bad guys and whatever other strongman stuff superheroes gotta do. In this phase, Nightwing will be performing full body strength movements like sled pushes, yoke and farmer's carries, deadlifts, and heavy squats. All these movements will be performed at high intensity while keeping the overall training volume low across this phase. Now onto the final phase that brings everything together. But before we do, if you guys are liking the video and want me to do one on how Batman would train in real life next, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment Bat Gym down below. Okay, now onto our final phase. Phase C, peak speed and power. Like we talked about before, what gives Nightwing his advantage in a fight is his incredible speed, and this phase is where we'll be building that speed. In this phase, Nightwing will be working on movements that will focus on taking all that raw strength he built in the previous phase and turning it into explosive speed and power. Because remember, explosive power is simply the ability to exert a lot of force in a short amount of time. So now that he's able to exert a lot of force, we need to increase the speed at which he can exert it. So he'll be doing a lot of sprints, heavy kettlebell swings, jumping movements, Olympic lifts, and med ball work. So those are the three phases of Nightwing's training. And now you might be wondering what workouts in each of these phases would actually look like. Well, you can find out by checking out the full free program at the end of the video. Each of these phases would be done anywhere from six to eight weeks at a time, depending on how Nightwing is developing. If his strength is really high, but his speed is low, he might only do phase B for four weeks, and then you would spend a full six to eight weeks on phase C. Or if he's recovering from an injury, he might wanna spend longer building capacity with phase A before going on to hit phase B and phase C again. Nightwing would be able to change up the lengths of each phase depending on how his body is feeling and how he's performing in the field. Now after completing each of these phases, Nightwing would want to take a deload week where he cuts the amount of volume and intensity he's doing in half to allow his body to rest and fully recover from the stress of the previous phase before it goes into the next one. Now this full three phase program could easily be repeated multiple times. All that Nightwing would do after completing a full cycle of phase A, B, and C would be take a rest week and then he would start back from the top. But this time around, he'd make everything slightly harder right off the bat, since his performance metrics are gonna be a lot higher since he just went through a full cycle of the program. And I've created this program while keeping in mind that Nightwing can afford to get overly built because every extra pound of muscle mass would slow him down. That's why the majority of his training will be at low volumes with high intensities. This is how MMA fighters and other athletes train who want to increase their performance without putting on extra body mass. The only phase that really puts him at risk for putting on too much muscle mass would be phase A. So with phase A, he would simply need to closely watch his diet and dial things back if he starts to get too big. Now a program like this obviously only covers his strength and conditioning work. It doesn't cover his mixed martial arts or acrobatic skills. Luckily, Nightwing would get a lot of MMA and acrobatics training while out in the field, but he would most likely have to dedicate a workout or two each week on top of this program to maintaining those skills. Nightwing would also have to work his training around any big missions he's taking on, either solo or as part of a team. If he has a big mission coming up, he wouldn't want to train insanely hard right up to the mission, and instead he would want his training to be relatively low volume and intense the one to two weeks before the big mission, so he isn't overly fatigued going into it. This is exactly what high performance athletes do right before a big game. They take a short amount of time to drop the stress from their training so that the fatigue will fade away and then they can actually show and realize their peak performance. Now to download your
your own completely free three-phase training plan just like the one I created for Nightwing. Use the link down in the description of this video. While following this plan, you'll want to do each phase for about four to six weeks before taking a short deload week and moving on to the next phase. Now that you have your program in hand, you're going to want to watch my video about how the Punisher would train in real life. In the video, we take a deep dive into the Navy SEALs training program, and it's pretty cool. I'll see you guys there.